If you never taste a bad apple, you will never appreciate a good apple. In the same way, we have to experience the life to understand it. With this beautiful quote, I wish you all a cheerful morning. Prayer is the world's greatest wireless connection to get connected with the God. So let us listen to a prayer song by the student. Happy morning, my dear students. Let us begin this day with a small prayer. Almighty God, source of life, we worship and praise you. You are the truth and origin of all knowledge. Bless us that we may study well, obey our parents and teachers, and be honest in our behavior. Lead us from darkness to light. Bless our studies and enlighten our intellect. Grant us the grace to seek truth and make us truly wise. Now I would like to request you all to stand in the attention position for the anthem. Financial situations. So to carry on with this topic and to explain 
moon, I would like to call Simran Narmani and Simran Thakkar. Good morning, respected father, principals, hobbies, sisters, teachers, and all my dear friends. I Simran Narmani. I Simran Thakkar. Of Lavan's Commerce, we are here to present our talk with moon lighting with some advantages and disadvantages. After listening the word moon lighting, we might be had doubt that we are watching about the moon or probably its moon or probably the lighting the moon. Now let us understand the actual meanings of the moon lighting. Moon lighting is a word which means an act of work in a second draw, especially without going to your main temple. The term moon lighting has been popular in America where people started working an extra job in addition to their 9 to 5 job. Since rise of the concept from work from home, people started getting free time and thus started engaging themselves in an extra job. So, for working out for more for more to organization, this term as moon lighting. Thus, there are some advantages of moon lighting. Moon lighting help us to enhance our income. Moon lighting help us to broaden our network. Moon lighting help us to increase our knowledge and skill. So now let us know some disadvantages of moon lighting by that fact. Moon lighting has some advantages and disadvantages too, which are as follows. Due to working at a two jobs at the same time, people started getting irritated and angry. The employee might go up for the competitor companies. Due to working at the two due to working at the two jobs, people started getting declining. Due to working at a part-time job or a second job, the employees started getting irritated and angry. So, by keeping advantages and disadvantages in our mind, our topic comes to an end. Thank you for your patient listening and have a nice day ahead. Thank you dear classmates for enlightening us with the concept of moon lighting. Generation ago, our ancestors were engaged in the farming and used to have acres at the acres of the lands. But now, in the modern world, people of new era are more interested in a white collar job or business or trade. Slowly and gradually, our nation is moving from the aggregate nation to the industrial nation. So to know the reason of this shift in the economic sector, I would like to invite my classmate Jessica Chelani. Good morning to respect the principal, Jobby, sisters, teachers and all my dear friends. I just think of Standard 11 Commerce is standing before you to speak on the topic changing sales of sectors, economic activities, results in the production of goods and services, while the sectors are the group of economic activities which are classified on the basis of some criteria. The Indian economy can be classified into various sectors on the basis of ownership, working condition, and nature of activities. The economic activities was in primary sector during early civilization. But with the production of food and increase in people's need, this led to the development of secondary sector. The growth of secondary sector spreads its influence during 19th century. A support system was needed to facilitate certain activities, and certain sectors like transport and finance played an important role in supporting industrial evolution. You may all be familiar with mainly three types of sectors. Primary sector, second sector and tertiary sector. First, primary sector. The primary sector of the economy can be directly undertaken by using natural wealth. It includes dairy farming, animal husbandry and all the activities relied on nature. The people engaged in the sectors are called red collar workers. Second, secondary sector. The secondary sector of the economy. It includes industries where the finished products are made. It includes cotton fabric, sugar cane production, etc. The people engaged in the sectors are called blue collar workers. Third, tertial sector. The tertial sector of the economy helps in the production of primary sector and secondary sector. It includes finance, banking, transport, communication, etc. The people engaged in the sectors are called white collar workers. Thank you. Thank you, Jessica, to make us aware about the changing share of the sectors in the economy. Albert Einstein had stated that it has become appallingly obvious that our technology has exceeded our humanity. Everyone present here is using a computer, a sophisticated machine, for doing various jobs. But how did it come into existence? So to know about the history and the evolution of the computers, I would like to invite my friend Sameen Bhaktani. Good morning everyone. As we students of class 11 Commerce A have optical subject computer, I, Samir Bhaktani, would really love to share with you about the development of the first ever computer and the incredible journey that led us to the powerful machines that we use today. The first computers were developed in the 1940s during the World War II. These early computers, also known as mainframe computers, used vacuum tubes to assess data and are powered by electricity. They were very large and expensive and required a team of experts to operate them. These computers were basically used to perform various complex calculations for military purposes. The first ever computer was known as the ENIAC, which stands for Electronic, Numerical, Integrator and Computer. 
which weighed in at about 30 tons. Thus, these early computers were really huge and took up entire rooms. Over the next few decades, computers became increasingly advanced and sophisticated. With the development of the microprocessor in the 1970s, computers became much smaller and much more affordable leading to the development of personal computers. These early personal computers, also known as microcomputers, were very much smaller in size and less expensive as compared to mainframes and thus they could be used by individuals for performing various tasks such as spreadsheet analysis, word processing, just to name a few. Over the years, computers continued to evolve, leading to the development of various modern devices that we use today in our day-to-day -day lives, such as tablets, mobile phones, laptops, etc. Computers have really become an essential part of our daily lives in the modern era, and they are used in almost every field, from communication and entertainment to business and scientific research. But the evolution of computers is far from over. With the advent of artificial intelligence and machine learning, computers are becoming even more advanced and intelligent, able to analyze and interpret data in ways that were once unimaginable. It's really fascinating how a computer works and the incredible complexity that lies behind its simple exterior. In conclusion, the development of the first ever computer was a major milestone in the history of technology. From the early mainframe computers of the 1940s to the powerful machines that we use today, Computers have truly revolutionized the way we live and work in countless ways. At last, I would like to conclude my speech with a beautiful quote given by Isaac Asimov. I do not fear computers, I fear the lack of them. Thank you and have a great day ahead. Thank you Samir for giving us a short account about the evolution of the computers. A new day starts with a new beliefs, strength and endless possibilities. So to inspire us and illuminate our morning assembly, I would like to call Riya Sharma for the thought of the day. A very warm and cheerful good morning to one and all present here. My name is Riya Sharma from 11th Commerce A is going to present thought of the day. Never give up on, on what you really want to do. The person with big dreams is more powerful than the person with all the facts. I would like to repeat my thought. Never give up on, on what you really want to do. The person with big dreams is more powerful than the person with all the facts. Thank you. Thank you, Riya. Pledge is a way to make us aware of our duties towards our nation. I also, I would like to request our class teacher, Deepa Ma'am, to lead us with the pledge. Kindly stretch your right arm for the pledge. India is my country. All Indians are my brothers and sisters. I love my country and I am proud of its rich and varied heritage. I shall always strive to be worthy of it. I shall respect my parents, teachers and all my elders and treat everyone with courtesy. I pledge my devotion to my country and its people. My happiness lies in their well-being and prosperity. Now, as our assembly is coming to an end, I would like to express my gratitude towards our class teacher for supporting us and thanking Father Jogi for giving us valuable opportunity to conduct today's assembly and showcase our thoughts. And lastly, I would sum up with a beautiful quote. See the bright opportunity in each new day. Every day may not be a good day, but there is something good in every day. Now I would like to request you all to stand in the attention position for the anthem. Shabbat Shalom.